I remember that. Okay. Well, with that uh, in mind, it looks like we're live. So um, as we do at the start of all meetings, uh, I would remind, her, uh, remind everybody that we're now recording the meeting and it's being live streamed on YouTube for the public. Uh, today's committee meeting is a hybrid meeting with some members and participants located physically at the commission offices and others participating from their respective homes and places of work for the duration of the recording. Uh, thank you to those who have joined us today and to the members of the public watching our live stream or later the recording of this meeting. And as we do at the start of all um, uh, meetings of our uh, board and our committees, uh, we, um, we make a land acknowledgement. And to that end, on behalf of the HR and Compensation Committee, we would like to acknowledge the traditional land on which we are gathered as Treaty 6 land. Uh, we would like to thank the diverse indigenous peoples whose ancestors' footsteps have marked this territory for centuries, such as the Cree, the Dene, the Soto, the Nakota Sioux, and the Blackfoot peoples. We also acknowledge this as the Métis homeland and the home of the largest concentration of Inuit south of the 60th parallel. It is a welcoming place for all peoples who come from around the world to share the Edmonton metropolitan region as home. Uh, we have a short agenda today, so I'd be uh, looking for approval of the agenda. Would one of you gentlemen like to move uh, approval of the agenda? Andrew? Yeah, I'm happy to move the adoption of the agenda. Um, so all those in favor, please raise your hands. Okay, perfect. So the agenda is approved. So the next item of business, I would turn over to Mr. Jankowski. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. So uh, as you indicated, we have one item on the agenda today, and that is the uh, discussion with the committee of our proposed uh, business plan elements for 2023. We're bringing these forward for both the committee's consideration and input, uh, and ultimately hopefully recommendation to the uh, operational or the, the organizational uh, meeting that is going to be taking place next week. Um, we wanted to seek the uh, input in advance of that to try to secure at that organizational meeting the approval of these elements in conformance with the requirements of the Commission's governance bylaw. These elements are also being used and any input that you provide today will also be used in the drafting of the uh, 2023 operating budget that we are bringing forward for the uh, board's initial consideration next week and uh, hopefully ultimately for approval in November. So with that, um, we're following a process that's similar to the one that we used last year to uh, get the kind of the concurrence with the proposed work plan elements. Um, this year, we have actually broken those proposed elements down into three categories of elements. One is the continued work to prepare for the opening day of service or for service delivery, uh, as we've discussed with the board over the last number of months. The second really assumes that we complete that work and uh, move forward with uh, oversight of the delivery of transit services to our eight members, uh, along with other regular business activities that would really become the, the sort of ongoing business as usual for the commission once that operation has started. And the last category of uh, activities are we've lumped into the uh, sort of bucket of continued evolution of the commission. So then starting with the first bucket, getting ready for service delivery, we've had many discussions over the last number of months about uh, primarily the first, uh, first uh, element, the first number one there, negotiation and the execution of service transition agreements. These service transition agreements have changed over time. The, our approach is, has continued to evolve and particularly in light of many of the changes that have impacted the definition of our opening day service. 
we now uh, anticipate that over the coming months, we will be engaging in individual discussions with each one of the municipalities that currently operates transit. Uh, and we will be sorting out the details uh, relative to items two and three. One, the number two is relative to the uh, transition of oversight of those municipal employees that are involved in the provision of transit services. And while originally it was intended that the commission would become the ultimate employer of many of those people, I think it's fair to say that with some of the discussions that have taken place, uh, we may be looking at a uh, temporary uh, mid-stage transition and a set of um, uh, activities, a set of agreements uh, with regards to uh, having some of those some of those municipal employees uh, deliver on the the uh, uh, collaborative and deliver on the the integrated transit service while potentially still remaining employees of their host or of their. Uh, initial their original uh, employers, their, their existing municipal municipalities that are employing those people. Similarly, with regards to transfer assets, while it was envisioned that for day one of operations, a number of assets, the ownership of a number of assets would transition into this organization. I think uh, now we're in a, a bit of an interim stage where we uh, there are still questions with regards to what the commission will look like in its ultimate configuration. And so uh, in, its, uh, in this next stage, the stage of uh, starting to deliver integrated services, uh, some of the assets, uh, it may make more sense to keep the ownership of the assets with their current owners, the current municipalities. So those are the, the first three activities. And the fourth is really all uh, the, the grouping of all those activities of getting our messages out with regards to the new service that will commence on opening day, uh, making sure that our future riders understand the any changes to the service delivery uh, understand what it is that uh, what what buses they will be getting on how those relate to an integrated service brand um, the development and, and implementation of a service brand website uh, and the appropriate wayfinding for uh, all of our future travelers to be able to uh, uh, get to and to be served by the commission's transit service on opening day the last number five uh, element is the ongoing implementation of the ARC system in order to benefit all of our eight member municipalities and the commission itself and the operation of the commission with the latest quality of uh, ridership and fare collection data uh, to be able to formulate a, our future service offerings and refine our future service offerings, and B, to help inform the future financial allocations uh, in regards to those service offerings. So while we continue to await uh, the, the full implementation of the ARC card, we are now getting involved and will be over the coming uh, year getting involved with being a full participating ARC system member. Uh, and capturing the, uh, the promised uh, benefits of the ARC card implementation. The second category of activities, as I mentioned, are those activities that we expect to become business as usual activities throughout the year. Uh, once we've uh, put in place the opening day of uh, the integrated transit operations uh, in uh, the second quarter uh, of next year, then the oversight of that service delivery in combination and in partnership with our member municipalities will be ongoing business as usual. In addition to that, you can see the other activities that we've been involved in over the course of the first couple of years of preparation for opening day. And we certainly will be continuing in regards to all of those activities of preparing our, our uh, yearly budget submissions. Uh, in 2024, we, for example, will be uh, expected, expecting to include a much more substantial approach to capital implementation, while we originally thought that that would form part of 
the 2023 budget preparation with the changes that we've had to deal with over the last year. Uh, much of that focus on asset management and on capital programming will uh, really come into the fore as part of the financial planning for 2024 and beyond. Um, stakeholder relationship management, continued management of the relationships with our member municipalities, and dare I say, potentially even with other municipalities where we may be entering into agreements to uh, uh, deliver integrated transit. Those are relationships that we will continue to focus on, on developing and on maintaining to the benefit of all of our communities. Continuing to, to uh, make progress and to report on such with regards to the strategic objectives that the board laid out this year for the next three year time frame, and ongoing focus and evolution of uh, bylaws and policies as required. The uh, last group of activities that we have identified are those uh, business plan elements that are focused on continuing to evolve the commission. Um, in the first uh, activity or first main area would be continuing to build organizational capacity, uh, building a robust risk management framework. And one of the lessons learned this year is that from an insurability and uh, from a risk management and liability management standpoint, um, we know that we've got a lot of work to do to, in order to uh, be able to constitute our and define our risks in a way that can be uh, bid on and in a way that can be priced by the insurance markets uh, serving the municipal sector and serving agencies such as ours. So building that uh, robust risk management framework will help us get more, um, more information with regards to our insurance requirements and be able to price that more uh, accurately to manage our risks. Um, the second one we had uh, originally identified uh, prior to uh, the an now anticipated changes in our approaches to asset transfer and employee transfer. But originally we thought we were going to have to build in-house procurement capacity. And the, the uh, board members may remember some earlier discussions uh, on, in that regard. Um, at this point, we're going to be exploring a number of functions where we, uh, we hope that our existing municipal members may be able to assist us with early um, service, uh, service assistance in some of those categories. And procurement is one of those, those service areas, one of those functions where we think maybe deferring investment in uh, building in-house procurement capacity and relying on uh, hopefully one of our members to help us out uh, might actually serve all of our members a little better. Um, so that, that while we know we've got to uh, incorporate, we know we've got to build that capacity or, or ensure that we have that capacity, um, we've, we're going to be looking at different ways to perhaps satisfy that need. Building an asset management framework, however, is one that regardless of whether the commission owns its assets day one or whether those assets continue to be owned by the member municipalities, all of the member municipalities will benefit from a sound asset management approach to ensure that our future financial needs are adequately planned for, uh, for, for the commission and for its members. That work of building an asset management framework, which quite frankly, we had in the 2023 plan, but because of emerging priorities, we've deferred to next year. Um, we, sorry, in the 2022 plan, we've now deferred to the 2023 plan. We know we've got to undertake that in order to complete the also deferred development of a, and a robust financial man, financial planning, planning framework. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit dry in the mouth. Um, so those are the main activities within the building organizational capacity uh, category in, un, under this evolving the commission. And we've got three other areas that we're, we've identified a new focus on um, or continued focus on. The second one, we've talked to the board uh, a number of times now about our ongoing work, both in partnership with CUDA, as well as separately on behalf of our eight member municipalities with regards to um, seeking 
uh, perhaps more innovative and different funding solutions to minimize the impact on our municipal tax bases across our eight member municipalities. So that will be uh, on an ongoing focus as well with, with regards to evolving the commission's business. Um, <clears throat> and really this ties into the stated objective during the business case development of uh, working with and, and get, benefiting from a stronger regional voice that represents multiple municipal uh, needs as opposed to uh, individual voices uh, vying for attention at the senior levels of governance government. The second area on this slide, the third overall activity is the now much required, in my opinion, governance review. Um, we are uh, legally obligated by virtue of the requirements in our governance bylaw to undertake a governance review by the end of 2022. Um, so we will be initiating that work this year but we're also obligated to complete that work within 180 days of initiating it. So uh, what we've got on our work plan and what you'll see reflected in the draft budget submissions uh, later this month and through discussions next month is the uh, undertaking and the completion of that governance review within the first half of 2023. And last but certainly not, not least, um, continuing to reflect the board's uh, strategic priorities around having the appropriate principles and practices developed with regards to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Now, in this particular area, um, while we had originally anticipated that many of the staff would be transitioning from the member municipalities, uh, and now we might be exercising different types of arrangements with our members with regards to those, those staff uh, compliments that nevertheless does not reduce our need to ensure that we put in place the appropriate principles and practices to uh, reflect the needs of the communities that we serve and to ensure that as we're serving the public in general, as we're serving the riders uh, that will be counting on this integrated transit system, that we have the appropriate approaches uh, reflected in all aspects of our service delivery. So those are the three main areas that we've got identified. And uh, our next steps would be to take the input that we um, that, that you may wish to provide today, make the appropriate changes or revisions to this and bring this back for uh, the board's consideration and approval next Thursday at the organizational meeting. And so with that, I will, uh, I will step back and happy to have uh, either myself or any of our uh, leaders to answer the questions with regards to any of what you've, you've seen on the screen. Uh, thanks for that presentation, uh, Mr. Jankowski. Uh, gentlemen, questions for Mr. Jankowski on this uh, body of work uh, that we're being asked to uh, give uh, approval to? Um, Wes. Uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Paul, uh, or Mr. Jankowski, a couple of questions. One, um, talk to me about the, uh, the integration of the ARC card. Uh, I, I assume the NDA uh, has been signed. We have access and are, are participating with the, the other municipalities that are working to integrate this. It, it, would that be a true statement? Yes. So we, uh, you know, after, after months of working with the uh, city of Edmonton, who are really the coordinators on behalf of the existing members in the ARC uh, system implementation agreement. Um, we've now uh, got a duly executed non-disclosure agreement and we're now starting to gain access to much of the information that will help inform not only our own implementation of ARC, uh, which will really be a transition of some of the existing members uh, membership and existing members needs into uh, our integrated system approach, but also will ultimately result, we hope, in the collection of much better data, uh, as I said, to both plan and to assist the in the financial planning of uh, ways to uh, modify our services and move forward with better services in the future. 
Uh, fair enough. Uh, so the logical step then of a, of a commission then would be a unified fare structure. Uh, has there been any uh, contemplation about when such conversations will start uh, and what they might look like? Or is that for uh, a future discussion around uh, business planning? So that, that is uh, definitely a focus for next year. Um, the, the whole uh, question of an integrated fare structure is one that is, has got a lot of uh, complicated uh, uh, considerations around that. So for opening day, what we're working with is a uh, continued reliance on the existing fare products, on the, exist, uh, on the existing fare uh, categories that uh, are in place across our eight member municipalities. Uh, but certainly over time, what I believe many of our organization, many of our members, and what certainly we would advocate for and work towards, and, and really lead, I think, uh, in terms of uh, uh, bringing a regional approach to that integrated fare discussion. I think with the creation of a, an integrated transit approach, certainly moving forward or moving to uh, common fare structure for all municipalities uh, makes the utmost sense. Uh, it introduces ease of understanding for those riders that will uh, no longer have to uh, juggle multiple um, fair considerations when going from one eight, one uh, jurisdiction to another uh, and ultimately make the, uh, the, the future financial agreements a lot easier to uh, move forward with as well. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, looking forward to those discussions because this, that's, that's actually one of the you know, significant goals that can be achieved within a uh, commission structure. So I look forward to those discussions. Um, my, if I might continue, Mr. Chair, just a, a further question around the, um, the governance review. Um, I, I suspect you'll put together a, a, you know, a project charter outlining uh, uh, how this is going to be accomplished. My, my, my key question around that is, is the integration with the, uh, the thoughts and opinions of the eight municipalities and the uh, uh, I, I just wonder, has there, it might be a premature question to be honest, but have you given some thought as to how that kind of information will be gathered uh, you, uh, and who's going to be the principal uh, 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 voice, I guess, of the eight municipalities would it be the mayor, the CAOs or what, have you given any thought to that, I guess? We're, we're just now starting the work of developing a request for proposals. Um, we've, uh, we've been working with Shore Jardine, our uh, legal counsel to start drafting that. And certainly in reflection of many of the discussions that have taken place over the course of the last couple of months in particular, I think it'll be imperative to uh, include not only the, uh, the board members, but the CAOs, the heads of council, and potentially even all of all of the uh, members of the councils. I, I think that those are some of the details that we will be working out through the preparation of the RFP. And it will also be informed, I'm sure, by the submission of proposals from those qualified firms that uh, may wish to consider assisting us with that kind of work. Perfect, thanks so much. Those are my questions, Mr. Chair. Great. So, Nat, do you have any questions? Uh, just only one based on that that piece, uh, and, and I imagine again this would be part of it. But but I want to make sure that for the governance review, we have a good understanding of how other structures operate across the country, across North America, uh, because I, you know, while, while it's important to get the political um, perspective. Uh, what, what I want to make sure we're not missing out on is, is what is best practice and how that helps uh, or hinders, uh, you know, based on the different options out there. So I saw your head nodding, which would suggest that's, that's part of it, but uh, it, it's got to be a multi-part piece. 
Uh, absolutely. I know that um, in discussion with uh, a, a number of other panelists recently and when we were discussing governance approaches to uh, regional transit integration, there were a number of competing needs that uh, were discussed and and uh, there, there was a good discussion, for example, in, in the discussion that I was involved in, in uh, creating perhaps different, um, different types of uh, steering committees, bodies to provide uh, oversight or provide direction to an organization like ours with respect to different functions, governance functions, service planning functions, those, those kind of community engagement functions. And so you're absolutely correct. We're going to be uh, seeking some better understanding of what's been used, what's been tried in other jurisdictions, the strengths and potential challenges of some of those approaches. And we, uh, we do anticipate we'll be bringing back uh, a much more role robust discussion piece on this issue, particularly in light of a lot of the discussions that have taken place with individual councils over the last number of months. That sounds great. Thank you. Those are all my questions. Otherwise, I appreciate all the work that went into this. So, Mr. Jankowski, this is the framework against which you will then uh, work to develop the operating plan for 2023 and ultimately lead us uh, beyond that period of time. Is that a correct assumption? Yeah, so many of the things that you see reflected in the plan right now um, really form the basis of the draft budget preparation that Ms. Shea Smith has been driving over the course of the last number of weeks. And uh, in addition to the very heavy focus on the costs and the funding required for opening day and for the service delivery, these functions that you see reflected in the previous number of slides are also being integrated into that, that construction of that suggested draft budget. Okay. And um, uh, are you getting input from uh, the member municipalities relative to uh, any of those component pieces of the budget going forward? So the, the primary input that has been provided and that we're continuing to engage with the, the eight uh, CAOs and senior administrative teams on is with regards to the operations costs. Um, so the biggest part of the budget will be around that opening day of service and the oversight of service delivery. And in that respect, or with regards to those, uh, those elements that will constitute roughly about 80% of the 2023 budget, uh, they, though there is very heavy, heavy involvement and heavy consultation uh, municipality by municipality, because many of those costs have to be uh, considered or have to be approved by the board to be um, requisitioned from the member municipality. So yes, there's a, a heavy, levy, heavy level of engagement with them at this point. Yeah. Okay, well, that's good to hear because I think that's a crucial part of the communication strategy is to ensure that we've reached out in an effective manner to uh, to build uh, the plan with appropriate input uh, as required. So, so I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, so I, I, I will just add to that. You know, those discussions can be um, can be somewhat challenging at times because all of the local yeah. CAOs rightly. Uh, are, are looking to protect the, the interests and the needs of each member municipality. So uh, there, there is a very healthy amount of discourse that is taking place during those discussions. I would have expected nothing less than a healthy amount of discourse. <laughs> Sounds good. So today, uh, for the purposes of this meeting, are you looking for us to uh, put a motion on the floor? Yeah, so I think uh, if, if uh, the board is comfortable, I think what I'm sensing is the board, if they, the committee is comfortable, and I think I'm sensing that the committee is comfortable with these uh, suggested elements, then uh, we will take the input that you've provided and we're seeking a recommendation uh, from the committee to the board for next week. Yeah, I guess from my point of view, um, I see this as you, you've, you've got a skeleton to on which to build the budget going forward. We know what our operating costs are likely to be uh, going forward. So on that basis, uh, you know, I'm comfortable with that. And I understand you've had a similar conversation with our uh, audit and finance committee. And uh, what, what, what sort of uh, feedback did you get from them, if any, on this particular um, topic? 
yes, we did. So we, we met with finance and audit committee last week and uh, very similar to the discussion that took place just now. Um, we, there, there were questions for uh, probing and developing understanding, but I would suggest that there was general agreement uh, and the uh, audit and finance committee passed the, the motion or a similar motion to the one that you see on the screen uh, recommending the uh, work plan elements and business plan elements to the board. So then a uh, line of sight would be if they, if they as a committee have, have adopted it and we adopt it, then ultimately it's movement forward to the board uh, in our budget process. And then we will entertain the appropriate motions at that point in time when we get there. Okay. All right. Would one of you gentlemen like to put this motion on the table? It's on the screen uh, before you right now. Can you see it, uh, Mr. Councillor Broadhead? I can. Uh, so I'd be happy to make this motion. I move okay. that the HR and Compensation Committee accept as information the draft 2023 business plan elements and direct staff to reflect the input of the committee in the preparation of the annual operating plan for the presentation to the board at the October 20th, 2022 organizational board meeting. Okay, if there's no uh, further discussion on this topic, I would uh, um, uh, say all those in favor, please raise their hands. And that uh, motion has carried unanimously. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Jankowski, um, do we have an in-camera session today or not? No, we do not, unless there are items that the the committee wants to refer to to that. We had no planned items. Okay, great. So uh, we've effectively uh, dispensed with the items of business before the committee today. Uh, so with that in mind, if there's nothing else, gentlemen, I guess I would probably declare the meeting to be adjourned. Thank you so very thank much, you. Mr. Have Chair. Have a good day and enjoy the chilly weather outside. Or uh, <laughs> Councillor Knack, I hope you're sitting in a council meeting thinking deep thoughts. <laughs> I will be soon. There's a good lunch break. Thank you for uh, for sharing your time with me. Okay, well, we'll right. let you go eat some lunch. So <laughs> sounds good. Take care, everybody. Take care, everybody. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.